Hey fellow star citizens, this is Figgy Pudding here coming at you from Grim Hex. So recently I've been hunting some player bounties, I've been playing some master modes, and I've been thinking a lot about combat, and I've been thinking a lot about armor and balance, and where we might want to go from where we're headed with master modes. And the number one thing I really start to think about whenever I think about how to round out the combat system is armor. Not this kind of armor this kind of armor. Right now, there are a few problems with ship-based combat in Star Citizen. We have light fighters blowing up medium and heavy fighters, light fighters blowing up medium-class ships, light fighters blowing up capital-class ships, and pretty much light fighters blowing up everything. Armor has been touted as a solution to this, as well as some changes to having ships be populated by more people, having better turret defenses, but we do have a 50% nerf to ballistic weapons as an armor placeholder, and it hasn't really changed any of that. So I think this idea for armor works really well with master modes and the increased focus on team gameplay that we're seeing to help solve those issues along with the whole ecosystem of changes that we're seeing come into focus this year. In this video, I'm gonna argue for a particular system that I think makes a lot of sense for ship armor, and I hope you do too. So let's get into it. All right, so just like we have different size components, I'm imagining in the future, hopefully we'll have different size armors. And I think that each class of ship should get a certain size of armor. And I'm gonna explain why that makes a lot of sense here. And of course, this isn't something I think should be applied across the board. You could have things that go up or down a little bit to balance them out. But I think this five-tier system makes a lot of sense once I explain the entirety of the concept. And so how this basically works is light fighters would have a size 1 armor, heavy fighters size 2, and then all the way up to capital ships with size 5 armor. I'm imagining there will be a weight component to it that will do something to reduce your maneuverability or top speed. And so I think it would be nice if you could downsize your armor if you wanted to, to save on weight and increase your maneuverability. I think the more options we give people to customize their ship so that they can pursue the strategy they want, the richer and deeper the gameplay will be. Alright, so we've got five armor sizes. What does each of these size classes actually mean? Alright, so what we have here on the left is the class of the armor, where zero corresponds to the base class, which is, let's say, the light fighter class has class one armor. And so we look at the zero, we look over, has 100% defense against size one weapons. Now, size zero weapons would go to minus one from there, and so you'd have 150% defense. I know that doesn't make much sense, but hang on a minute, we're gonna talk about this. Then if you went to size 2 weapons, which would be plus 1 from the armor class, you'd only have 50% defense. Now you could say the same thing for capital class armor. You would have 50% defense for size 6 weapons, and 150% for size 4 weapons, because capital class armor is class 5, and so size 5 weapons would be at the 0 or 100% mark. Before you stop watching, though, I want to note that this does not mean you're going to have 100% invulnerability to all weapons of the armor class size, so keep watching for a minute here. The percentage is really just a pool of defense percentiles that can be distributed between ballistic energy or disruptor weapon armor. So anybody who's been playing Star Citizen for a while knows about the power triangle, but I bet nobody else knows about the armor triangle because, well, because I made it up. So the same way the power triangle trades off between engines, shields, and weapons, we can think about armor as potentially trading off between ballistic energy and disruptor defenses. Like with the weapon sizes and being able to downsize, this also gives a person the ability to choose the kind of armor they want and accept whatever trade-offs come along with it, allowing them to customize their gameplay and strategy to their situation. Alright, so let's go back to the earlier table we were looking at and see what this means for a person's armor in a balanced armor set, where you would have the armor triangle at the center of the triangle, like when your power triangle is equally distributing power to all three areas. 
You can see here that at the base class of the armor, you would actually only be getting 33% resistance to ballistic energy and disruptor weapons. So that means a light fighter with size 1 armor would get 33% resistance to size 1 weapons of all kinds if you got this balanced armor. Now if we look at the negative 1 here, that would correspond to size 0 weapons where you'd have 50% resistance to all three kinds. And if we look at the plus 1, it would correspond to size 2 weapons where you'd only have 16% resistance to all three kinds. This is interesting, uh, but let's look at some real examples of this on real ships so that we can think more about why you might want to have a certain kind of armor versus another and what the real trade-offs are. Alright, so I know this one's a fan favorite. The Corsair is a ship a lot of people really enjoy, and it's also a medium-sized ship in my mind, and so that's gonna make things a little more interesting than a ship with a size 1 armor, like a light fighter, where you can't really go down that much. So if we look at the Corsair, it has a balanced armor right now, and so that means it's gonna have 100% resistance spread across all three weapon types for size 3 weapons. So it's gonna have 33% resistance for size 3s, 50% resistance for all size 2s, 66 for size 1s, and complete resistance for size 0 weapons. And then up to size 4, 5, and 6, you can see the resistance slowly drops to nothing. Now in my mind, this offers you a pretty good advantage uh, if you don't know what you're going to be doing or what you're going to be coming up against. And what you can see here is an interesting pattern. Now let's look the opposite direction and see what would happen if you went with 100% ballistic armor. This is complete ballistic resistance, but no attention to energy or disruptor weapons. You've got 100% ballistic resistance to size 0, 1, 2, and 3 weapons. And then size 4 you drop off to 50, size 5, 25, and then size 6, 0. But you're not taking advantage of that 300% pool. And so you have the same resistance all the way up to your armor class and you completely miss out on the extra percentage you could be distributing to other armor types. The flip side of that trade-off is you do get complete resistance to ballistic weapons all the way up to your armor class. Alright, let's take a look at the Gladius. You can see here that the armor is an even mix this time of energy and disruptor. We've got the triangle moved to the point directly between the two, and so those percentages are going to be split between those two with none given to ballistic. Now Light Fighter has size 1 armor, and so that means there's not as much room below the armor size to handle weapons because there's only a size 0 weapon, there's no size negative 1 weapon. So that means the best we're going to get out of this is 75% resistance to size 0 energy and disruptor weapons. For the armor class of 1, the size 1s will have an even split of that 100%, so it'll be 50-50 energy and disruptor, and then just like the others, declining through size 2, 3, and all the way to 0 on size 4s. Alright, so let's take a look at one more example here, and that's the Idris. This is a capital class ship, which means it's going to have size 5 armor, and that armor, if it was evenly distributed, would have 33% resistance to size 5 weapons. Now that's pretty good and it gets even better as you go down. You see the size 2s and 3s across the board is going to be between 100% and 66% resistance. Now there are some exceptions to this, but most light to heavy fighters do tend to have between size 1 and size 3 weapons. And I think this solves an important problem for us that I've seen a lot of people talking about recently, and that is that very small craft shouldn't probably be single-handedly taking on capital ships. The same way you wouldn't run up to a Abrams tank with a handgun and expect to do any real damage to it. Now of course you've got things like the Ares that are specialized in damaging capital class ships and you can see here that they would still be very capable at doing that. And you've also got heavy fighters that have up to size 5 weapons and so they could still be doing some decent damage here if it wasn't in an area that the capital class ship had specialized on protecting itself from. So I think this provides a really healthy and potentially very deep and strategic way to scale up ships in a way that seems to make sense and prevents the kind of maneuverability meta that's taken place where it trumps all else, even up to capital class ships. 
There is unfortunately one little problem with this system, with where things are right now with ballistic weapons. So I'm just going to talk about that now and uh, what a potential solution is for it that I think would be pretty clever. So this image shows our current situation with ballistic weapons uh, and armor. And in, in my opinion, it's not great. Right now we have an across the board 50% nerf to ballistic damage, which is meant to be just an armor placeholder. This system would replace that, which means in most cases, for most ships, that 50% would go down unless you're specializing in it. So in most cases, the DPS of a ballistic weapon, especially a larger ballistic weapon, is actually going to go up. Now if these weapons are 90% penetrating shields, that's kind of a problem because even with reloading, you could shred somebody in a couple of seconds at most. Having ammo is supposed to balance this, but it doesn't really, I don't think, if you're just going against one or two people, because if those two people or even one person is dead, then they don't really care that you're low on ammo by the end of the fight. So I'm going to suggest an alternative to that. And I can already hear people saying rock, paper, scissors, but I think that this actually works, and I think it introduces a whole new level of strategic gameplay, especially team strategic gameplay, that could be really interesting. Now let's start with things that haven't changed in this image, which is energy weapons. So we all know that energy weapons do less damage than ballistics. They damage the shield, and then the hull once they've broken through the shield. I'm going to say that that is actually energy weapon's strong point in this new system, that they can do damage to both the shield and the hull of the ship, and their damage to either is slightly lessened to balance them between the other two options. Now if we look at the new ballistics, the idea here is that they don't do any damage to the shield, they are completely deflected by it. So the shield needs to be brought down before they can bring their higher DPS to bear on the hull of the ship. And then, of course, at the other point of the triangle, you have disruptor weapons, which will do high damage, but only to the shields. And then, once you're through to the hull, they can disrupt components, disable engines, and all the other effects we're familiar with. So I think this really plays nicely with the idea of specialization, too, because you could have craft in a team of ships that are specialized on taking down the enemy's shield, and then another craft that's specialized on destroying the ship once the shields are already disabled or maybe coming in if you're pirates with just disruptor weapons and taking down the shield and disabling the ship. And so for cargo vessels, people might specialize on weapons where they know somebody like a pirate's gonna be coming after them. And so they're gonna get armor that's going to specifically resist disruptor weapons because they know people probably aren't going to be trying to blow up their ship full of very valuable goods. So to wrap up here, I really think that this system can offer us a lot of interesting and strategic gameplay. I think the system would really give people a reason to buy each of these armors for different purposes. Whereas right now, when you have components with C, B, and A quality, you really only have a reason to buy the A one unless you can't afford it. All right, thanks, Star Citizens. I hope you found that interesting, and I hope that somehow this information gets back to SIG and they think about some of these ideas, because I think if we round out and balance the systems that we're using for some of these weapons and armor, we can really make some interesting strategic gameplay that gives players a lot of options for how they go into combat and how they try to protect themselves out in the verse. If you liked what you heard and you thought it was interesting, please consider subscribing and uh, smashing that like button. That's it for this one. This is Figgy Pudding, signing off, as always, from the Burrito Bar.